Diane's heritage is from a part of the world which was part of the yeah. British Empire. Okay. It isn't any longer. It's obviously a freestanding, independent country, but she still feels British. Well, there's plenty of people who have come to Britain. Whose parents have come, who've come uh, themselves, who regard themselves as British. That's fair enough. I mean, you can't... Someone's identity is a so very personal thing. So it hasn't quite thing. died if... Uh, well, it hasn't died. A lot of I immigrants, think... you see, they yes, don't I call agree. themselves English. And even sometimes they don't call themselves I'll tell Scottish. You, uh, they, well, I'll tell British just seem to be the I umbrella. I remember seeing a thing, Norman Tebbit, a few years ago, and he was talking to Darkest Howe, and he was saying, oh, you can be British, but you're not English. And I rather think that there's that people in Scotland can say, no, you can be Scottish. I think there's a difference. I think there is a slight thing of race to the idea, uh, the, the phrase, you are English. It means you're white. I think that's what it means, or that, that what it means to a lot of people. And I think you see, well, the British thing, that is all encompassing. But I think in Scotland, there's many people who have come from uh, families, uh, ethnic minorities. Well, the big who, Asian population uh, in Glasgow. Who regard themselves as Scottish and are accepted as Scottish. Do you buy the British message from Gordon Brown? I don't buy it from Gordon Brown. I, I do, as a matter of record, think that the English do think of themselves as British. What Gordon Brown seems to me to be doing is mounting a counterattack to an attack that hasn't actually come. Mm. I mean, it was predictable that he would be attacked for being a Prime Minister from a Scottish seat with this West Lothian question, meaning that he was legislating for things that affected the English and not his own constituents. But actually, that attack has scarcely come. Mm. I mean, I thought the Tories were going to make his life intolerable because he was in that situation. And it's almost as though Gordon Brown hasn't noticed that the attack hasn't come. And so, funnily enough, now, here we are discussing this point. You know, he is opening this matter to discussion when really he should just want the thing closed just down. Do you think, think the, the think Tories have missed the opportunity then? Oh, yeah, absolutely, I do. But I think yeah. by going on about this Britishness, all Gordon does is draw attention to the exactly. fact he's Raises Scottish. The <laughs> we didn't mention it, you yes, know, so and just got on with it. Diana, I want you to just take a deep breath because I know you were away for a while and you may not have realised <laughs> that your great leader and hero invited somebody it's called Margaret Thatcher, Thatcher to, yeah, tea. to tea. Yeah. Now, do you want to lie down in a dark room for a few minutes before we continue? It's, it's interesting. Do you think he was taking lessons on patriotism and Britishness from her? Possibly. Let's, you, you, <laughs> possibly. But as you said, um, Gordon comes from a very solid Scots Labour school. Yeah. The first book he wrote was about someone called John Maxton, yes. the Red Clyde. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't see much of this position of stuff in this. Presumably, Gordon is doing what he thinks he has to do. Well, he, Diane has committed worse crimes against socialism than inviting Mrs Thatcher to number 10. So. I know. Yeah, exactly. Well, I, I don't know he compiled the red paper on Scotland. When, uh, when I suppose... So we're dragging, up, Gordon Brown something, who, yeah. we're yeah. dragging up his leftist party. But it, it seems to me clear, as a journalist, what, what he's doing, and, and that is that he's always known he's a tougher sell to Middle England, not Middle Britain, mm -hmm. to Middle England, than Tony Blair ever was. In the early years, Middle England took Tony Blair to be one of their own. So he's going out of his way, and the Britishness is only one part of it. Taking half the Daily Mail agenda, which we're going to come on to later in the show, only is, half. An, is, is another, <laughs> maybe three quarters, <laughs> you can tell us later, Dad. It's all part, he knows Middle England will determine the next election. It's an election strategy. It is, I think, um, I do think that the decision to invite Lady Thatcher to Downing Street maybe will win votes down here. I heard there was one Tory MP who said that what he was doing, he was exploiting the, the, the good feeling towards Lady Thatcher. Not in Scotland. <laughs> no. And I think... Well, the, the Nationalists I think, assume well, watch I the think, backyard, think Gordon, because it, it won't Kelty, respond well Dunfermline, to uh, Lanarkshire, all these places which were devastated under her, and they do not forget and I think he'd better watch his core vote in Scotland. And I think this, this, I think it might win him a few marginals in Middle England, and I think it might lose him a couple in Scotland. But if Parliament comes back and we don't have an election, uh, that could well be the time when the Tories will turn up the heat. After all, they had very little time from Mr Brown becoming Prime Minister to everybody going away for the summer recess. Well, I, well, I hope they will, but, but actually I believe that the moment has passed. I think you had to establish it before Gordon was even elected as the Prime Minister, you had to say this would be an intolerable situation if we had someone who was legislating not for his own constituents but for others. And then you had to make clear when he had that sort of mock Queen's speech, remember he had a Queen's speech Indeed. without the Queen? Not the Queen's speech. That, then you should have said, no, all of this is intolerable because your own constituents aren't affected by this. You have to, you have to build up the pressure. I think to come along now when he's been Prime Minister for four or five months and say, oi, 
there's something wrong here because you represent Scottish seat. It's just too late. Could I just point out to all of you that if this isn't working, why is he 11 points ahead in the polls? It says something about the Conservative Party. Oh, it says there. something about yeah. the way the Conservative Party ideal has been detached from the party itself. And the way that, that, that Blair. But he's moved so many of his hands onto yeah. their lawn. As teenagers and members of the Scottish National Party, we used to say, well, Labour, you could see it in England, would never be elected again, or it would change. It had two choices. It had to change, or it was not going to win another election in England. So they chose change. And, and Labour, on? as was then, isn't Labour now. It's like. So you, 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 don't, bits, you, you know? don't feel British at all? I don't... No, I would say that I have... have, have and feel in the words of Norwegian, a Norwegian of, might feel Scandinavian. Yeah, I feel, I feel ties to England and Ireland. I feel... But, I mean, you know, I watch the, the, the French at the rugby singing the Marseillaise and I feel the, the, their, their song about freedom and liberty, that appeals. You read the American Constitution, you feel drawn to that. It doesn't mean that I feel I need to be run from Westminster. It doesn't mean that I feel that in any way Scotland is bet, better represented here than it would be in Scotland. Now, America. you've said, Anne, you do feel British. You explained that earlier. What yeah. about you, Michael? Feel British, oh, yes. Uh, very much so. As much or more than English? Mm. Uh, a bit of both. I mean, I'm, you know, my, my mother was... They're not mutually exclusive. No, no, no. My mother was a Scot, but I've always, I've always lived in England, and so I think of myself as English. But I think, I think probably mainly I do think of myself as British. Let me just say, of course, there's another issue here. Apart from England and Scotland, there's also the issue of uh, integrating people who've come to this country and our worries about terrorism and so on. So Gordon Brown has a whole other set of motives. And that is part of the Britishness. agenda. That's yes. absolutely yeah, right. That is part he of talks a lot about why is it that American Muslims mm. seem to be much more better integrated into America than British Muslims are. Do you think it is working, though, <laughs> the, the, the wrapping yourself in the flag uh, and Britishness? Well, it may work with a certain section of white voters in, in, in the South East, but it's not, that's not why he's 12 points ahead. I mean, he's 12 points ahead because, actually, that dual Scottishness has worked very well for him in a series of It's a lovely of contrast to Blair. Who are you, exactly. who are you calling dual? <laughs> <laughs> you go later. You've been here too long, haven't you? <laughs> how, final question. If you think Britain's finished, how long is Britain going to last? Um, probably about another 30 years. Oh, well, still a while. Uh, that long. Uh, unfortunately, I think, I think it'll be about 30 years. Okay. Listen, thanks very much. Good luck with the tour. It starts yep. next week. Next, next week. In Carlisle. In Carlisle, in Carlisle yeah. Just over the border. You pick, you pick all the hot spots. <laughs> Good to see you. Thank you very much.